Hi hey everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this 27 inch monitor from Pixel. What makes it different is it's frameless, but not only that, it's got a recommended retail price of just £120, which is pretty good considering it's got HDMI, display port, it's frameless, and it's wall mountable. Okay, let's have a quick look at the box. Doesn't say much in all honesty. You've got where it says Pixel, it says Full HD Frameless, 27 inch, tells you about it being LED, it's got HDMI, DisplayPort connection, and it's Visa wall mountable on there. Doesn't really say much else on the front. On the side, pretty much says exactly the same thing again, but with the resolution and a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. Okay, so here we have the Pixel monitor. This is 27 inch. Also, it is frameless, so that means there's no bezel around the edge or very little of it. So that makes it look pretty neat when it's pushed up against another screen. So you get less of that black line down the center if you're having multiple screens together. So first of all, you've got a power cable, power brick. It's standard, 12 volt, four amp, nothing too special there. And you connect up a kettle lead to it. You've got a user manual, gives you a bit of information in there. Uh, not a huge amount in all honesty. It tells you about two year warranty. So you've got uh, a web address there, pixel.technology.com to do your returns if for any reason you need to. If you're buying from distribution, I suggest you get it direct from the distributor. Uh, right, okay. So the stand, pretty straightforward. So it seems quite sturdy and strong metal stand, so it's not plastic, which is good. It is quite thin. It does have a screw already screwed in there. Let me find what screwdriver I've got handy. Not much handy at the moment. So let's just get that screw out. It's in pretty well. So I'm guessing that is going to screw onto there like that. Okay, to get that to screw onto there, what you're going to have to do is take this little sticker off the bottom. If I can get it off. There we go. And that needs to slide down there inside the hole and screw in to allow the base to become nice and sturdy. Let's make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't wobble about. Yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. And then you stick that little rubber bit back down. That's to stop it wobbling about and also make it nice uh, and solid. So it's sort of like anti-vibration and stops it sliding as well. You've got one on each corner there. So the screen itself... You can see the model numbers on and so forth on here. Um, it does have a plastic sheet on it, but it doesn't have one of these little pull bits on it to make it easy to pull off. So that means you're going to have to get your nail in there. Or I'm presuming it's got a plastic sheet on it. It looks like it. No, the other ones I've reviewed have. Yeah, it does. It's slowly coming away, so it's not the easiest way. And then it just pulls... Off. So be gentle when you're obviously doing this and peeling it off because you don't want to stick your nail through the screen itself. There we go. So that's come off pretty easily. So that wasn't too bad. Sorry for the glares from the lights. But let's have a look at it. So it's not very thick at all. It's only got two connections, well three connections other than the power. You've got an audio, I'm guessing it's an audio pass-through or something along that for headphones or something like that. You've got HDMI and a DisplayPort connection on there. And that's a warranty sticker on the bottom. On the back, not much to see in all honesty. You've got, looks like vents there as well as vents there or options for speakers, which it says there's no speakers included. So, let me just double check. No mention of anything about speakers on there, so I'm guessing it's some form of audio pass-through through the HDMI, but who knows. 
And then to attach this to the back of the screen, you've got to take this piece of rubber out again. There's a little screw in there. As you can see, a bit like the um, was for the bottom, you've got to screw that into the back of the screen. Obviously, if you're laying the screen flat face down like that, make sure the surface you're putting it on is clean. You don't want anything like a screw or screwdriver or any dirt getting stuck into your screen because that will permanently damage it. So let's screw that in. Just make sure it's as tight as it wants to go. It does seem a little bit wobbly. Okay, that's as flush as I can get it. Let me just try a different screwdriver. One I probably should have been using in the first place, just to make sure. That's in as tight, and it has got a little bit of wobble on there, in all honesty. So that looks like it might wobble a bit on your desk. So that's the first drawback. That where it mounts there is quite a small area. Okay, so let's stand it up. Well, before we do that, your controls are on the side here. So you've got M, obviously for the menu, up, down, and then power there as well. It looks like there's two ups. There must be one select, and one up, down, and power. So let's stand it up. Yeah, there is quite a bit of a wobble to the, stand, to the screen on there, unfortunately. Tilt wise, you can tilt it forward and back. It doesn't rotate, but the screen does have a good bit of flex and wobble in there. I'm just going to undo that screw slightly and tighten it again just to make sure it's in 100%. Yeah, it's in as tight as it's going to go. So the screen has got a bit of a wobble. Not a big deal if you're not touching it, but you might find on your desk, you might get a slight bit of wobble uh, left and right, unfortunately. Not so much back and forward, it's just that left and right where it doesn't 100% fit in there. You can see it wobbles back and forth. It's not the most secure fitting in all honesty. But again, this is a 120 quid screen, so uh, we'll see how it tests out in a few seconds. Okay, as you can see here, we've got both of these screens set up. This is an AOC monitor, 24 inch. This is a 27 inch pixel monitor, the one we're reviewing today. And as you can see, the picture quality, in all honesty, looks very similar. There's not much in it, and they're both HD. Um, this screen is generally a lot cheaper than that, even though that screen is smaller. Um, the colors, pretty much identical. Actually, it just seems to be a little bit more detail around here than it does on that one, and easier to see the marks on here. It's probably because it's just a little bit bigger, the screen. So it gives you a bit of an advantage what you're looking at. So again, no 4K um, or anything like that on there. One thing, as I said, it is wobbly a bit, left to right. As you can see, it does easily wobble. But saying that, you look at it compared to the AOC screen next to it, the AOC screen is wobbling about a lot more than that one is. You can tilt it front to back, again watch where you press the screen when you're tilting, so you're going to have to put both hands on the base to do it and it will let you tilt it forward and back. So it's very, very good. I must admit the yellow does look a little bit better on there uh, and the oranges and stuff like that. But otherwise the quality is very, very similar. But for the extra size and that frameless design, bear in mind it's not completely frameless. So it doesn't go all the way up to the edge. You do still get a bit of a black border around the sides, but it's a lot better than having, for example, a big plastic border like you get on those so it looks a lot neater and more stylish and I must admit it looks even the black looks a lot better on this one than that so there, there, there are differences it just depends on obviously the image you're looking at some you won't notice much of a difference than others you will and again I'm especially seeing it in the yellows and oranges there is a just a bit more color there it's probably the the reds all together which are making it look a lot better. Again it is a TN panel not a IP panel which means it's not 
the best quality panel in the world, but it's not the worst either. It's a uh, very standard mainstream. Um, you can get IP uh, monitors on the market and the quality is usually a lot better. The blacks are more black and so forth, but to be honest with you, this is pretty good. And this one looks a little bit washed out by the neck, but there you can see the vivid colors and the same again with the markings. So I must admit, I'm very pleased with that. And as we said, you can tilt it back and forth. You can't turn it or anything like that. It does have a bit of a, a wobble on it. Hopefully it's just this screen. Uh, I've tried tightening it, taking the screw out, putting it back in, but it doesn't alleviate that issue with the wobble. But you can wall mount it as well. So if you want to put it on a wall, you can, or you want to put it on an arm or something like that and have multiple dis uh, displays together, you can do with ease. You can pick these up at your local independent stores, or uh, if you wish, you can buy them with the links below in the description. But overall, very pleased with the picture quality of the screen, especially considering its price, which is roughly 120 UK pounds. You can adjust the settings via the menu, which is not easy to get to. It's on the right side on the back. I've just gonna click the off button. So that gives you a rough idea how difficult it is because you can't see what they are unless you're looking at the back. But when you do turn it on, you get the blue pixel screen and a few seconds later, you get your image there. The button at the top, if I can find it, let's move it forward a bit, is the menu button. It's quite big, you can see, you can see brightness contrast. It's only on 50% brightness, so that's actually pretty good. So you've got other buttons on the back for up and down. So you've got input mode, you've got reset, you've got language, and you can change the position of screen if you wish, if you get one, one of these PCs, which doesn't automatically adjust for whatever reason, which is rare these days. You can adjust the color temperate as well. So red, greens, and blues, which is an advantage if you want it a little bit more one way than another. Uh, let me get back to the where I was. And you've got image ratio as well. So you've got it on wide. Doesn't seem to be any presets on there, like uh, there is an eco mode and DCR, but there doesn't seem to be any presets like game mode or anything like that. But saying that, the quality, considering really what you're getting and what you're paying, is pretty good. And just to get you a rough idea, if you wanted the brightness a lot higher, it will go a lot higher, but obviously it will wash the picture out potentially somewhat.